Hello, hope you are having a good day. I'm going to do something slightly different today. I'm going to do a bit of um, show and tell kind of thing, I guess you could call it that. And then I'm going to do a face off. I'm going to do another face off with, where are they gone? Sorry, right there. My 14 style Cruyff. Hopefully that's going to come in some form of focus with its marvellous little monkey tail. It's one I've restored myself if you haven't already seen. Um, it comes to me in the right old state. Uh, so I've shaved with this already. You might have seen it, might not. And it was a good shave, but it felt like it was lacking something. Like it didn't irritate after or anything. It was still quite sound. <clears throat> but it left me thinking is it got more to give. So basically I took it back to the stones. I took it back to uh, 2000 very briefly just to to put a nice scratch pattern back onto the, the real high glaze from the the glass light finish, well almost glass light finish from the 12,000 Shapton. Um, and then I've took it through 5,000 and then I've got a dark, what I believe is a Tammy Shan a Tamo Shanta stone. Um, I was speaking to a fellow razor restore and I sent him some photos, a lovely chap on eBay I found, come across. and. Uh, he believes it's probably a Scottish stone. Like I've still got a wrapper, and I think it was like Keen Razor's Edge or something. Or I have to have double checks, so I forget. So and on the on the, um, the packaging it said British made and everything. Um, and the kind of stone that it was, with the pattern it's got, as a reference point, it's only kind of up Scotland way. It had some like streaks in it and stuff, and it was a dark colour, and you, some of the Tammy Shanters like that dark, some of them are really light with speckles, some of them are quite dark. Um, it's definitely not a finishing stone because uh, the 12,000 Shapton put you know like a really glazed finish after that but it seemed to help it from the 5,000 to the um, like in between the 5,000 and the 12,000 it seemed to put it was weird because it's it almost almost dulled the 5 but it seemed to take out some of the scratches from 5 if that makes any sense and from my from my reading, that's a bit of a common thing with the with the naturals and stuff. Like I'm not an expert on naturals. This is, you know, I'm I, I started on uh, synthetics and I ain't moved on to my naturals yet. Long story short, but the same dude on eBay I was just mentioning, he sold me this rather lovely see the old coffin box, old fashioned, with a little. Hang on. And it is, it's a Charney Forest one. And he's a resta razor restorer himself, or at least he was. I think he's I think he's still doing it. I'm not, I don't actually ask. Uh, so it's a good old length. It's a bit narrow for my liking. But it's still very workable. And sometimes it's good to have a narrow home in your collection. Because if you get a, a razor... Hang on. If you get, be really careful with me edge. If you get a razor when you imagine you've got it on a wide, on a wide stone. If you put the razor down like that and it's wobbling, like my, my edge is not touching it on purpose, but you would put your edge down normally. You know, so if the spine's a bit out of cock, like sometimes you get it on one side, sometimes like sometimes you get like a wonky spine on one edge and then the other edge is flat, like. And you can still sharpen them, but you've got to like angle the dangle and you know manipulate your wrist and stuff. Um, but sometimes if you yeah, if you get a razor that don't sit perfectly flat on your nice wide hones, you um you go to one of these stones and I find it helps because your contact points are less as you're going across with your X strokes. So it um it finds the edge easier, I guess you could say. So, uh, so I'm excited to use it. I've got it today and I'm clucking to have a go of it straight away, but <laughs> I've got loads of stuff to get on with today. I've got a party later, so I can't get out of it. It's Simple as that. <laughs> and it comes with a little stone as well. Get the old cream up. And what I do with that is I probably won't rub it on there. Like the fella said, like um, two, three minutes, you know, get your cream going and whatnot. I probably won't do that to, to preserve this stone. I'll probably just use this on one of my little diamond plates and I'll, I'll get this cream off of here and then I'll just put it on there. Uh, because that's what I do with some of my other naturals to, to basically preserve the depth of the the stone. And, and from what I've read, I don't really need to do that with Charney because what I think once you've got them dressed flat and nice and everything, I think that's it. 
I don't think you have to really touch them. Well, much anyway, let's put it that way. It's not, it's not a regular job. So my other show and tell today is I've got some of my restorations that I would like to show you basically because I'm quite proud of them. So this one's not completely finished yet. I've still got some like some polishing, like it's just auto sole stuff in there that I've got to get out of it. And um, so this is a celebrated King William razor by Joseph Elliott. And I've seen the celebrated King razors before, like sorry, King William razors before. And I forget the dates of King William. I should know. I'm British, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not a friend of the monarchy, I suppose. <laughs> well, I'm certainly not their friend anyway. Um, but basically, it was in the 18, like 1820s to 1850s. It was around that mark. So it's an old razor, and I imagine it was brought out to celebrate his monarchy of some description. It's probably from his coronation, I guess. Tighten the pins ever so more slightly. They were actually tight when I did it. And they've relaxed a bit because when you've got when you've got like a heavy blade like this isn't it's not that heavy because it has got a really good hollow on it for such an old razor as well before the hex machine um you know you've got to be careful like because just the weight of it can sometimes catch your finger man like when you're not sort of fully concentrating so yeah when i've got a heavy blade i always like to tighten the pins so it don't do that like mm. I don't know. Yeah, see, see the fingers, I can still get my finger in there. I don't know. It probably is tight enough, actually, that is. But it was a little bit tight when I did it. Uh, so this is the face side. It's still got some scarring. It's got some pitting. Um, you know, I, I, I could get rid of most of that. I could take it down to, I don't know, wet and dry paper a bit further and everything. But that's not my game. I, You know, if somebody bought this and they wanted to... To, to get it more pristine, do you know what I mean? I'd I'd take the challenge on and everything for them, but for me, this is good enough. <clears throat> and I will be selling this one lotly. I probably will keep it for a while, but you know, I've got so many razors in this kind of style. Um, got some lovely little sort of bull nose. I think they're a bullseye, are they? Called bullseye. The nice domed. These are CNC machine these are, so they ain't got the little donuts underneath them. Like, and I suppose if you're a traditional, like full on restorator, you'd want the donut ones, cause you know, they're the ones that come with it, but you can get them as well from some fellow in America, I believe. He makes his own, which is rather cool. Yeah, so that one come out nice, it's nice. Um, I can't remember the width of the blade now. I had to take a little tiny bit off of it because it, it had a slight frown. It had a slight frown just here, which I found quite strange. But, you know. Some people, man, they just Muller raises on hones and it, it amazes me how much they actually Muller them. I'm like, how could you even do that? But hey, -ho, people do. And this is, well, this is probably the most special razor I've worked on. Uh, for two reasons, it was, it's from America, not that's, you know, not, not, not reason that's in itself I guess, but it's from America, it's from a dude who lost his uncle and he was selling off his bits and bobs, you know, uh, stuff they couldn't reuse or, you know, as you do. And uh, so anyway, I put in an offer, not thinking he'd accept it, and I still paid a pretty penny for it, I ain't got it cheap, I wouldn't say that by any shop, especially when you ch uh, chuck in the old shipping to old blighty and the old um the old vat and whatnot because that's auto put on now on ebay and stuff and various other actual uh, auction sites from around the world um yeah so it was, his, it was his uncles and you know it's my first for barber's use old wade and butcher and i'm right happy with it it, it weren't in a terrible state but it had you know, it had various like rust and it had a nick. Um, it was either there or there from memory. I've got photos, I can't remember. It was either there or there. Um, and I ain't kidding you, it took absolutely ages just to get the nick out. So it's got tremendously good steel for its age. And uh, it seems like it's took a marvellous edge. I'm not going to shave it today because 
I got it ready and it's had um, sellotape on it for a good while while I was restoring it. Um, and I, I believe I got it to near shave ready state, I'm sure I did. I, I can't remember if I put it onto the 12s. I think I did for a little while. But anyway, it's going to go back on the stones. Um, and uh, when I sort of was prepping it to make sure it was going to get kind of ni a nice evil, either bevel and everything, I put two layers of tape on it. And then I took one off after I got past, I think, the 1000. Or the... So it's been honed with tape. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the 2000 without any tape because that's what I'm going to start doing now with all of my what I could call forms of stiff grinds. You know, so this is a hollow, you know, and looking at it, well, <laughs> it does make me laugh that they call this a hollow because, well, it is. But it's it's such a it's such substantial uh, metal that oh, you can't call it a bloody hollow. <laughs> it's concave, <laughs> um, but to call it hollow, and it is it is hollow, you know, in technicalities. But it definitely acts a bit like a thin wedge. That's what we call it, um, especially like when you handle it and everything. You know, there's no, there's no movement in that edge. Like there's barely any movement, even if you put your finger near the edge, like right at the edge as you go off the edge of the stone, because like on hollow grounds and everything, you can literally feel like the wobble. Even if you're as gentle as anything, you can still feel it if you've got good touch in your fingertips and that. And I have, I've been a builder all my life. Good with my hands, good with my feel. Uh, so yeah, it's exciting, man. And I, I sent in some photos and, um, you know, like a nice little, like, Hope you like it and think, but I'm not sure he's in it because I think eBay might block your messages after a little while. Or at least, saying it's gone on anyway because he hadn't replied, and I know he would have because he was excited to see it. You know, he even said about buying it back, and if he still wants to buy it back, and you know, I'm happy for that actually. That'd be that'd be quite cool, like as long as I can get to shave it a few times, do a nice video and that for you guys, for the community, get it out there, get it seen. That's what it's all about for me. You know, if I can get one person shaving, that's great. And this week alone, I've probably helped about four or five sort of what I could call newbies getting going. Uh, so that's cool, man, because that's that's my aim, that is. That's to get more people shaving, whether it's with the safety razors first and then maybe, you know, venture out into your straights because I've got great passion for straight razors and just shaving in the hole, do you know what I mean? It's something special. It really is a lot, I believe. And, and anyway, sorry, off cough there. So these are horn scales as well, same with the, the King William one as well. And it's the first time I've used horn. So that's pretty cool. Like this has got, like in the sun, you can see like there's some little kind of like, sort of um, like rib, almost like rib things going across there. But then there's streaks going all the way down it. You, they, they, you know, they're not very um, vivid, I'd say like, you know, but I quite like that that they're not as well. Like it's nice. And I do believe, if you put this on some like polishing mops and that, which I don't do and I won't do, um, but even if you put some more time in your hand, with your hands, with, you know, going through the different grades, various polishes that you might understand yourself better, you can get this even shinier for sure, like, you know, uh, it's not been touched by anything rotating. I do not use anything rotating whatsoever. And I do believe it was almost kind of like one owner, you know. It come with another razor that was absolutely battered but from rust. So lucky how um, this didn't join it, if you know what I mean, because it could have done, because wherever it was, was definitely. But I have got one half of the box for this. I just didn't got the end cap. So it probably helped, you know, like, what way would it have been? It would have been down, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's where most of the damage was on the tip, like most razors. Had quite a big rust bit here. But thankfully, it didn't penetrate the metal much. You can still see it a bit, like, the, the very... But what I love about this, and, and again, what I wouldn't do to a razor like this, is sand it to get rid of your etching. You know, it's so important. Like, it is to me anyway. You know, it is to me. Um, but also, you know, in in certain angles of lights you can still see the machine marks and that's that to me is what's cool you know what i mean whoever made this razor you know whatever fellow spent that bloody time grinding away in his crappy you know work environment because it would have been 
You know what I mean? They'll have had tremendous fun when they was out of work, but gee whiz, man. Grinding houses, check them out. Especially in Sheffield. Fucking workhouses. Um, yeah, you can still see the marks, so that's cool. You can see them, especially up the top here, and a little bit towards the lower part of the blade. It's cool. You can see them all over it a bit, but that, that's where it's more prominent. And like I said to me, that's just cool, man. Yeah. It's almost like a, a dip into history. I put like, like a nice little brass wedge <clears throat> in it. Like it did have a, a lead one, and I considered putting that back in, but it weren't in the best shapes. Right at the back, like right at the sort of the tip, it had gone really thin and gnarly. And I've got lead. I could have done it, but I thought, you know, <laughs> lead's not the best thing to use. And uh, I think the brass looks a bit period, doesn't it? You know, so it's the only thing I've done in what you could call traditional. Other than using CNC'd bullseye or domed, I forget what. Are they bullseye? Or was that the other ones? I forget. I'm gonna have to have a look. And I've, I've put them. I've put them on quite a few of them. I've got um, three more sort of custom scales ones, or two more that I've done for myself. Ones an urn. Is it burr? I'm sure it's burr. And I rescaled my Hengel's 17 as well in the same colour as this with, yeah, with like the domed scales and they've just come out lovely. Like the burr one's got like a red, a red scale and it's really cool, like cause my, my favourite colour is red. And I'm, I'm a leather crafter so whenever I do like sheaths for a mate or anything like that or sheaths for presents or or even my bags, everything, everything's like uh, black with red stitching and everything. I'm, you could probably say I'm a bit obsessed with it, but it's all good, man. You know what I mean? It's all good. Right, and that's about it, really, for the show and tell. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I was going to say. Oh, right. Sorry. So let's start off the face off. I'm going to have to warm the skin up a little bit because I've been chattering. So, yeah, I'm going to use the coif again. With its old curly monkey tail, really different from the the Philly man, and it, it really does work. I was uh, talking to one of my customers on eBay the other day, and he loves his fillies, and he bought this beautiful. It was a video I did actually, like, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, the CV that was real, real mint, and it come in a little um, like leather case. I don't know if that was original, but I wouldn't be surprised because it needed it, it warranted it. Let's put it that way. It was a, it was a damn fine razor like satin finish almost on it. Um, yes, yeah, so I was just chatting to him and he was saying about CV raises and everything because he didn't know much about them. He's, he's into his fillies a bit and that. And so I said, oh, I've got this 14 razor that's like, well, I say I say rare and these these Cruyffs are reasonably rare. Like, because um, you don't see many of them, it's simple as that, like, you know. Um, I can't find nothing about the company, I can't. I need to sign up to the Spanish or Italian forums because they probably know more. They were in, more in touch with these 14s, I find. Um, yeah, but it's lovely. Like, so I was telling him about the monkey tail, and it does work, it really does. It's, it's nice. It almost like, like you know, I ain't got the biggest hands in the world, but you know, if you had a bigger hand, it'd really fit tight. You know, it'd really, uh, one of your digits was a bit bigger. So the other face off today, I'm going to be using this, it's called a, well, it's, I'll say it's called, it's stamped. So it's stamped HWL um, Solingen and it's got made in Germany on one side and I think it says 1765. Uh, and on the, the face there is etching that you can be seen in the light that says diamond steel. So diamond steel is one of them things that are used as branding from what you can kind of gather. But I believe it was probably because they probably, well, I think it's probably because they used a bit of Swedish steel in it or something, you know. Um, I think it was probably finer grained or, you know. But so you can't, um, I can't find much to do with HWL at all. Like literally nada. But it's got a nice tip as well, by the way, it's got nice top of spine, nice detailing, different. Um, there's one fellow on one of the forums, I forget which one, asking about a HWL, and eventually it turns out that he found, well, somebody found one that was, because um, he had a name on his as well, it was like 
Damicus or Damiusus or something like that. And he found an urn, one like would add urn on it as well, or at least one of urn's proper brands. And then it kind of went a bit cold, I think, on the thread. But then somebody else come across an urn that also had HWL. So I'm near damn sure. And frankly, like this style, I am sure I have seen urns like this. And it's not going to show up too great on this camera, camera, even though it's a pretty good camera. But but it's got a very, very fine, fine grind on it. And even the well, it's shoulderless, but if you add a shoulder on there, it's it's uh, it's mega fine. I don't know, it's not going to come across like really. That's me eating, you know, where the shoulder is, should be, kind of thing. It's, it's uh, I think you could call it a definition of a singing razor, a bit, yeah. You know, that's what people say. I ain't done nothing to it, I've just auto sold it. If it shaves really good, do you know what? I might take the scales off of this one and turn it into one of mine because I might do, let's see. Because I really like these razors. I like the tip like that as well. I like that, you know, where it comes down from the spine, it's all different. It's got nice gimping on the top, gimping on the bottom. The only thing that lets it down slightly is, is the scales. They're a bit sort of creamed. I imagine they were brighter than that. I think it's quite old as well because it ain't got the colours. But whether they were just trying to make it look a bit like ivory, I don't know. And obviously we don't know. Because through the passage of time, it seems like everything gets lost. But, right, without further ado then, let's get going. Let's warm my face up a lot. Excuse me. I hope you've all been all well enough. I've been all right, I've got a bit of headache today. I've changed my diet. I've cut out even more sugar and stuff from my diet. I used to do a lot of weight training in my 20s, so <clears throat> because of that, I did put a lot of study into nutrition, right? and so I know quite a lot about nutrition, and sugar's just the devil, man. It literally is the devil. The things that it does to your body is just obscene when you really go down the rabbit hole and that, and well, long story short, I come across a dude on YouTube. He's an ex-Olympian, ex and now he's like a holistic kind of guru of sorts. And nearly everything he spouts ties in with everything I've studied. And I used to study like uh, medical journals. I didn't, you know, go for the old magazine stuff. Do you know what I mean? I like went for science kind of thing, you know, and trying to understand the, mecha the mechanisms within us, chemically and physically and, and electronically. Um, so yeah, and uh, I come across this dude, man, and it's almost like he's helped put everything I learned in my 20s a bit, and into my 30s, into sort of like a box, and it's really helped me sort of, sort of metabolise my, my thinking and my thoughts about nutrition and everything, you know, and I've got a daughter now, do you know what I mean, and it's like it, it encourages your mind to, I don't know, forms of protectivism, I guess, isn't it, you know, I want to do the best by her and show her that, um, so I was just looking at the camera saying that. Um, show that, you know, there's different ways to live in this basically what's being advertised, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, sugar, sugar is one of those things, man, do you know what I mean? So like now in the week, I fast every uh, every weekday. Um, if I've got building jobs on and stuff, I fast from the day before, which is, it ranges from say, that's like, let's say like seven to eight o'clock. And then sometimes my lady will have a bit of chocolate, uh, dark chocolate or something, I'll have half a bar. But we always try and do that before sort of half eight, nine o'clock. My, my cut off point is nine o'clock at night. I do not eat after nine o'clock anymore, unless I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I fast all, especially if I've got building work, I fast the next day. I'll have a white tea, no milk about lunchtime to give me a bit of a caffeine boost. No caffeine in the morning whatsoever. I don't do that any day other than Sundays normally. Um, and then I just uh, basically work all day, yeah, work all day. So some days if my job's like going over because I work for myself and everything, you've got to get stuff done. You know, some days I don't get home till like seven o'clock. I think the latest I've done it to is nine o'clock, but I have done a day and a half of fasting, it's fine. <laughs> once you get, once you can't do that at first though, if you start fasting because you, you'll get well hungry. You know, you, you, your tummy will be going because it does that for the first week a bit. 
But yeah, I've been doing it for years. It's the best thing I've ever found. Like, it really is. It gives my whole, it gives my whole body a rest. Because what people don't understand is eating is one of the most taxing things we do to our body. It really is. It's like, it really takes a lot of energy out of us. It takes a lot of, almost like resource and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I've been doing that for years anyway. Now I cut out, I cut out sugar years ago as well, apart from drinking. <laughs> um, and now, yeah, I'm trying to cut out more. So basically my lunch times um, generally will have no carbs or just barely any and when I mean barely any it's like I might have a coffee with a little tiny bit of oat milk in it kind of thing you know I'm talking a little bit of oat milk as well and I think I'm going to phase that out as well because you can phase anything out you know if you drip feed it out you can phase anything out so and uh, I think that's why I've been getting the odd headache this week because <laughs> uh, I've, I've drunk I've drunk nearly over a litre this morning didn't drink at all yesterday and drunk for like days so I don't know, it's not, I don't think I'm dehydrated, let's put it that way. So it probably means chemically my body's just like, whoa, I need more carbs. And it's like you don't need carbs the way we've been told. Really don't. Really, really don't. We were never designed to eat loads of carbs, let's put it that way. Especially the crappy carbs we're eating. Right, so anyway, that's my fasting rant and explaining why I've got a bit of headache, I think. So I'm sorry if I bored you there. Right. Let's get shaving. That's what we're here for, really, aren't we? Well, I am anyway. Yeah, I've got a party later. So I'll be drinking. <laughs> but I'll cut the drinking down now to two days a week. You know, unless there's kind of like, you know, a special occasion or whatever. But even then, it wouldn't be mass drinking. Drunk too much in my 20s. I didn't have the best parenting in the world. Bless their hearts. You know, I don't blame them anyway. Just. Uneducated bring people bringing educate uneducated people up, frankly. And I don't mean that in any way horrible. I say that to everybody I know. I barely know anybody that's been brought up by educated people. When I mean education, I do not mean school. I do not mean university. If anything, they're all there just to dumb you down, especially in today's world. This soap's still going, by the way, look. It's amazed me. <laughs> it really has amazed me. It's like I always say, when the bottom of your tuck puck puck goes, no worries man. You're still gonna get loads of shaves. First time that puck went out the bottom, I was like, oh no, not my sandalwood. <clears throat> Cause they're hard to get the sandalwoods from Crabtree and Elevin now. And they've probably changed their Do you know what? I don't even know what they still do, I have to check. Right, what should we go for first? Oh, and I forgot to say, like the reason, the reason why I reset the bevel on this and tried to give it another go is not because I thought it had more to go. It's because that I want to practice my Chani Forest on this. So the reason I put like a new edge up to the twelve thousand uh, Shapton is basically so then I can take it back down to the two thousand without the tape, and then take it back up through my progressions to five thousand, and then my dark time. Pardon me my dark uh, tam and then um, my 12,000 and then the charlie forest just so you know for my head <laughs> more than anything i get like a, a bit of a reference point well i can instantly tell that that's a little bit better that is because i weren't gonna i'm not gonna say it was snaggy at all because it definitely weren't like you know Definitely feels a little bit better. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Um, I don't know if I said last time, but this had a bit of a frown on it, so I had to properly bread knife. I bread knife the whole knife, uh, the whole edge. And if you've ever bread knifed a, a razor and then gone to, you know, excuse me, in the water. Never put your razors too far into your bowl, you can take your tip off. Always make sure you've got plenty of water. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, if you've ever... Oh, got a bit of my tash here, I don't want to lose that.
Yeah, it's definitely better that is. Yeah, it's good that I notice these things as well now. Oh yeah, definitely took a took three or four hairs off. <laughs> Tash, don't want that. I've got to trim it today, but I don't, don't want to take it off. One foul swoop that would be. <laughs> um, yeah, if you ever reset the bevel or anything and really took it off. Um, Yeah, that noise, that's because I had too high angle there. It's alright, I'm sure. Yeah, so you've ever reset the bell, sorry, it's because I was around my face and whatnot. You, um, you know, you've got, you've nearly got, well I did, I definitely had like a flat edge on that because it had a frown and everything. So when you put it back on the stones and everything, it takes a long time, like, you know, and especially if it's good steel, big blade, which that is. I know it's got a real thin, fine edge, you know, because it's a Philly Type 14 blade. But it still climbed up the blade a little bit because bear in mind that would that probably started out life about 20 sort of 26 mil 25 to 26 mil it's generally about 25 and a half plus mil when they when they start out um, and that's basically about 23 uh, yeah 23 mil it's 23 mil at the lowest point and it nearly goes up to 24 on the the hill but let's just call it 23 so. Because of that, it's moved down into a slightly thicker bit, I'd say. Um, these 14s, on the whole, haven't got like the German ground belly. So they haven't got like the thick band there. It just sort of goes down. Some of them I'll, I'll add. I've got a tiny bit of thickness towards the edge, but not what you'd call German hollow ground. <clears throat> right, so this is the HW L that I'm near. certain is an urn. I'm excited to shave, shave with this because I've had this razor a long time and um, it just kind of sat in my, one of my boxes because well I had other ones that almost took priority and I think I was just at the stage that I didn't really kind of almost notice the the worth and within it I don't mean I don't mean money either by the way um, like in this style of blade because to me these 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 are cool blades man like, like some of them they're a bit a bit plucky because they're so thin and I imagine if you had like a real tough beard going on or you're just a gent that could grow a real tough beard I don't know they might be a bit fine but then I say that and the fillies are about as fine as you can get and my filly for tough beards that nobody can really confirm at all that it's any different from a normal filly like especially like any different from let's say a hang on sorry can you hear that do you know what? That is making a very different sound to what I thought it was going to make. I thought that was going to be loud. And instead, that is really gentle sound. That sounds really surprised me. The amount of times I've shaved with razors that are similar to that kind of grind, you know. But I suppose they've got like shoulders and even a stabiliser, it's got nothing, I mean like nada, nothing. And that's as smooth as anything. <laughs> oh, it's always good though, always. Look at that. Right, so yeah, I think, because I've got rules now, and I've had, to, <laughs> I've had to put rules in place, so, I'm a level, oh, I think I said that, yeah. Because I'm a leather crafter, I'm going to make a nice, nice leather roll I am. And I'm going to make 16 slots in that leather roll. And I'm going to have 16 razors that are mine. So what I'm going to do is, when I get my razors in that I buy, I'm, because I, you know, sometimes I buy razors, like a job lot of razors, because I'm after one razor. You know, so the other ones I don't really want, but I've had, I've had to buy them basically to get the razor I want. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna put in one. Well, I don't think I'm gonna. I'm gonna put 16 slots in it.
Yeah, I'm going to put 16 slots in it. And I'm going to have 16 razors that are mine. They're my keepers. Because anything more than that, I think it's just greedy. And even some would say 16 razors is greasy, but you know, you've got to, you know, got to have some ones, and you? you've got to, you know. <laughs> well, Mrs. thinks I'm mad. And compare just on the first part. It's not always the fairest test because I'm better with my right arm than I am with my left. I'd say the Cruyff was a slight, slight winner, but not much in it. Yeah, so I've, I've got so many razors. Off the, off the top of my head, I've, I've clearly got sort of like 12, 13 that I don't want to part with. I've got a Bartman that I just love. I've got one, I've got two fillies, and one of them I'd struggle to sell because to me, that was the best shave I've ever had. That was literally just like a hair laser. It really was amazing. That's the for tough beards. And I'm not saying it's like, because it's for tough beards at all. I think it's just more the actual razor. It's just. Just brilliant, it's sharp and really nice. I do think the other filly, it needs a little bit more work. And I have said before I shave with that next, I will put it under the old microscope and give it a good going over. You know, my microscope's not massively powerful. It's one of them ones that you can sit on your table with a little screen and that. But it's bloody handy for razors, I tell you. And it, if you're new to, to honing and everything, I do suggest that you don't rely on it because you need to get your eye in, your feel in, your thumb in, all those things first. You know, you need, you know, you, you can easily learn to set bevels with a little, what are names? Are they called lopes or lopes? You know what the jewelers use and everything. <clears throat> You know, I've got plenty of nooks and crannies on my face, big chin, big cheek, and the fillies definitely seem to help, they do, getting into my nooks and crannies, or at least the fully tights, 14s. Marvellous. Marvellous. Right, I'm going to love you and leave you though, because I've just noticed my bloody battery's flashing and I didn't realise. So I apologise for that. But wash up, wipe down, dry up, strop away, make sure everything's dry again, and then when I think everything's dry, you leave it for a little while, and then I use a little jeweler's cloth to uh, put a bit of shine and, you know, Help keep them shiny, basically. Alright, so I'm going to love you and leave you. Sorry about that. See you later. Bye-bye.